<clears throat> that was a job. Um, finding the wires and, and pulling them out and, and tracing them back and clipping them all apart. Chris had that really well organized back there. Um, but still, I pretty much had to cut apart every bundle of cables um, in order to get the wires out that I needed to get out. Now I need to take the new wiring harness and sort of lay it into place and, uh, and see where everything's going to go and then start pinning it together. It's really hard to film because I, the space is so tight back there. Um, there's no way to get a camera in there really that you can see anything. So you're pretty much only going to see uh, the GoPro time lapse of this next sequence. I wish I could show it to y'all, but you know, I also have to keep moving. Filming slows everything down. Okay, so I know that the panel behind me looks like a bit of a mess. There are <laughs> wires everywhere. It looks like there's wires everywhere, but it's actually, um, it's come together really quickly. I was kind of surprised. So um, in the time lapse you saw, I, I, or maybe you didn't see, because all you saw that was the back of my head, but I pulled out all of the old wires. I unpinned all of the wires for the stuff, the equipment that we've taken out. I put in the wiring harness that we got from Fast Stack. Um, and then I took all of the little pins that they had already numbered and told me where they were going to go. And I repinned them into all of the, uh, D sub connectors that go into, uh, the Avidyne, the Trig, and, and then back into the Dynon. That went incredibly quickly. The wires that are left that still need to be connected, um, that's up to Chris and that's power and ground, which will go fairly easily, I think. And then it's just a matter of pushing all of that wire back behind the panel so that we can put the, uh, the new panel front on that I had made by six pack arrow and start plugging in the equipment again. So what happened behind me that took a day. Um, I think today I'm, I'm going to worry about doing all of the antennas. Uh, Chris will start working on this stuff. And I think by the end of tomorrow, we should be almost at the point where we can power it up. So up here on top of the airplane, um, there is one comm antenna. Uh, that is the existing comm antenna that, that we put in when we put the Dynon system in. I need to put a second comm antenna here. Um, the two comm antennas need to be at least 24 inches away from each other. We're over 30, which is good. Um, there's one GPS antenna back here on the, on the co-pilot side. I need to put another GPS antenna on the other side of the aircraft. Again, the same sort of thing, 24 inches between them, 24 inches between the, the comm antennas. They all have to be 24 inches apart. We've got lots of space to do that. So I need to put in the two new antennas here, plus the antenna that's going uh, where? Where is the top and back of the airplane? How did I lose it? I'm sure there's a back of an airplane here somewhere. There it is, <laughs> up at the top is the uh, nav antenna, and that's for the ILS and localizer. And so at the top of the tail, I have to mount this nav antenna underneath the cap. So I'm gonna have to take the cap off, cut a slot, and put this, attach it to the top of the fin. What do you know? There's mounting points. Of course, it doesn't quite fit. 
we'd have to change. Resources repair. I think we come back with it a little bit. Okay. So get that spot. We may have to drill this nut plate here, but we'll change it and put a, a different style of turret around. So we get still keep that support and see how that one's kind of no yep. riveted back. So we should come backwards and then we'll try and redo it. I wonder, I bet you somewhere in our junk we took this off. The top. I don't think we, we did. Yeah. I don't remember it, Chris. I don't remember because there was no ADF in the plane. It was the VOR. Oh, that's right. And so, and, the, and that's a cut it for it. So the other question is, do we, do so, we go see our friend and see if he's got something that may fit in there? Yeah. As opposed to chewing it out. Yeah. So I went and saw Joe at Premier Air Parts. Joe has a, a, a aircraft uh, salvage yard not far from Chris's shop. Went down and saw him and got a couple of other options of nav antennas. So we're going to see how those work out, but we might have to do a little bit of modification to the top of the tail in order to get them to fit. So once I used the template to drill the holes in the top of the plane for the GPS antenna, it didn't come with a doubler. So I'm making a doubler to go on the inside of the aircraft just to sandwich it all together to keep it from oil canning, just to make it a little more stable. Um, pretty much my understanding is anytime you start drilling through the aluminum on your aircraft, you should be putting a doubler in. So um, I've got the holes drilled. I've got it cut to width. Now I just need to use some shears and cut the radii around the outside, not my forte. Not too bad. So this is the new panel face that uh, Lyle at Six Pack Arrow made up for us, and the new IFR stack goes in this hole right here. And I keep thinking it's not big enough, but it is. So this is the stack of equipment. Um, Lyle has put a little flange on the inside, nicely put in there. What I need to do is figure out where to drill the holes to mount all of the mounting trays to the back of this so that everything stays in place. Um, Lyle does a great job with these. Powder coated, laser etched, perfect, amazing job. Anyway, so I need to figure out where to drill those holes. First thing I need to do is line up the faces. Line them all up, make sure they're all aligned. And then, draw some X's on. Okay, so I got them all stacked up, drew the lines, took the electronics out and put them away. Now I need to realign the lines and I'm gonna use these uh, Clico clamps to clamp this all together to move on to the next step. Okay, so we're all clamped up and I've got a little piece of scrap metal that I've marked and I'm going to clamp that to the side of the stack and then mark and drill the holes on the scrap and then use the scrap as a template to drill the holes 
in the uh, in the actual face. Chris tells me it's a lot easier to do it this way than to try to get everything into the place and mark the holes. Just make a template. Okay, holes drilled. Now in this hole is the dynon. And on the back side of the panel goes this tray that holds the backup battery and a couple of other things. So I need to rivet that onto the back of the panel. So up here on the tail, Chris has mounted the uh, VOR nav antenna. Um, took a little bit of work. He had to uh, put in a doubler and he took out all of the uh, all of the mounting points for the plastics, replaced and re-riveted everything. So everything up here is nice and solid. It was a little bit wonky before. Um, we knew it was something that we were, we were going to do. It was on our list. This was the opportunity to do it. So this is all hooked up now. We just have to uh, hook up the cable, the antenna cable, which is run through the fuselage to the panel. So the reason Chris is doing this is it's my screw up. I miscommunicated between um, advanced uh, approach fast stack and Lyle at six pack about a switch size. That's on me and Chris is going to make it right. Okay. We'll see if we can make it right. This may not make it. Uh, <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for sticking around to the end. Thanks for watching to the very end of the video and thanks for watching this next little bit. Um, once again in 2025, I am raising money for Hope Air and participating in the Give Hope Wings uh, flight across Canada um, that both raises funds for the Hope Air charity but also raises awareness in the various communities that we stop in and in the wider community through you um, that this service exists and that this need needs to be met. Um, Hope Air is a charity that uh, allows Canadians who need health care that is not available in their community to travel to the larger cities in Canada where that, uh, that need can be met. Canada geographically is a massive country and some communities are pretty far flung um, and people end up having to drive 12, 14 hours to get to where the treatment exists that they need. And while healthcare in Canada is universal, um, any Canadian shows up at the door of the hospital, care is freely given, you have to get to the hospital or you have to get where the treatment is administered. Um, and for a lot of people, this can be a very difficult time in their life. They're juggling a lot of things. Um, they may not have the financial resources to fly to Toronto and you know, put themselves up in a hotel room for a couple of nights and meals and so on and so forth. And Hope Air is a charity that takes care of that, takes that burden away, takes that weight off of, off of people's shoulders and allows them to just get well. So my part in this is to raise awareness and to raise money. Um, I work with other pilots who fly some of these people who are seeking treatment from smaller flying communities to larger centers like Thunder Bay where they can get a commercial airliner that will take them to Toronto or Winnipeg, so on and so forth. Um, and over the last couple of years, we've raised a lot of money for Hope Air. Last year alone, you um, donated around $40,000 um, to help out with this, with this cause. I'm very grateful for that. Um, I feel very blessed that we have created a community here on YouTube um, amongst everything else that's going on in the world where, where we can help people. So once again, I'm doing this. Um, once again, we're flying. I will be putting the itinerary down in the, in the description box of the places we're going to be in early June where you can stop in and, and we can meet. Um, also links to Hope Bear Charity so that you can check them out, see what they, what they do. And if you're moved to help, there will be a link to the fundraising page. Um, for everyone who has, who, has, who has given in the past, I thank you enormously. And everyone who is about to give, thank you.